awesome. Few minutes and we'll be we'll get that class get the class started. Okay, forty minutes. Okay, awesome. Well, welcome everyone. Really excited to be with, with everyone and, uh, um, you know, looking forward to today's class. Uh, as you know, we meet every Sunday, uh, 8 a.m. Uh, U.S. Pacific time, which is the time in the uh, west coast of uh, U.S. and we learn about the Hindi language. Uh, and um, we've been doing it for past many years and just one minute so I can make my screen a little bit bigger. Okay, awesome. Hopefully you can all see me. Uh, so really excited to, to be with you at uh, this Sunday. And uh, for those of you who are uh, new to Hindi University, uh, you can learn more about us by going to our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Hindi University. Um, and you can find out um, all the details about how to join the class, you know, how to join the practice sessions and, uh, and all the previous videos. Um, and if you're interested in joining the live classes, you can get all the details from this link, tiny.cc slash uh, Hindi University. Um, we plan to update this link with all the, the fancy details and structural videos. Uh, so you can like, if you're interested in only a particular topic, you can watch all of them. And if you're interested in only shorter videos and not the longer videos, so this is your go-to place, okay? This is your go-to place in case if you need any more uh, details about the previous classes and how to structure your, you know, program. Okay. So with that being said, um, let's get start started. And as always, feel free to ask any questions through, um, through the Zoom chat or through, you know, uh, Facebook and then. Okay. Um, so today we're going to be learning an interesting topic, uh, you know, like always. And uh, uh, as most of you know that we've been working on, you know, from the book called Teach Yourself Hindi. And we are systematically going through that book, I Teach Yourself in the, it's a book written by Professor Rupert Snell. So we want to give him the acknowledgement. Uh, and uh, we're systematically going over it. And right now we're on chapter number 12. Um, and as I said, like if you have missed some of the previous chapters, don't worry, you can still follow up and watch the, the recorded sessions. For the most part, we try to break down the session in such a way that even if you missed a previous class, you know, it should be a, a straightforward journey for you. But some of the topics do, um, you know, expect that you have some prior knowledge of, you know, the, the topic, uh, such as this topic, like, you know, today we'll be learning about compound verb, okay? And it's a um, compound verb, I would say it's, it's definitely an advanced topic and it expects that you have gone through, you know, uh, verbs before, okay? So I do expect that all of you are, you know, familiar with the Hindi verbs, which you are. Uh, and if, if not, still hang in there and try to learn from your other, you know, uh, friends, okay? Um, and that way, if you already know, it will make your journey much easier about how to use them, how to use compound verbs, okay? So first, my goal is to really talk about, you know, what are compound verbs, we'll, we'll do the definition aspect of it. And then we'll jump into why even use them? What problem are they solving? Okay, um, so we'll, we'll try to build the problem statement and then like, you know, the solution that compound verb, uh, verbs provide. Okay, so with that being said, let's, let's jump right into compound verbs. Um, so, Compound verb. I can tell you by after the uh, after finishing this topic, you will be able to appreciate some of the the Bollywood songs more because you know it is quite it is used quite extensively in in many of the songs. So when you hear them again, you're like, okay, I see. Even though they may not know, but it is a compound verb. Okay, uh, so that's that's my hope. Okay, so compound verbs are verbs when you know all of you are familiar with you know the action verbs or the main verb that we use. Right? I mean, we use khana. You know, we use pina, uh, you know, we use uh, many other, like, you know, uh, uh, scenarios like sona, 
you know, uh, Likna and you know what I mean, right? Now, these are just like, you know, you can use them in isolations, like as we use them, these words. Okay, so these are main verbs. But when these verbs are used along with some auxiliary verbs, Sounds familiar? We did it in the previous class. We learned about, you know, Pana, right? It was our topic for previous class. We learned about Pana and, and the past uh, tense of it, like Paya, okay? Uh, Dek Paya, Chal Paya, Bol Paya. Remember that, right? Where you are using, um, Pana has a different dimension to it, but in this case, we'll be learning purely about, like, it's also, you can, once you can argue that it's a compound word, but in today's class, we are learning about mainly one of the, uh, you know, uh, compound verbs here, right? I mean, so when you talk about it, like, you know, uh, you know, using main verbs with the auxiliary verb, the overall thing is called a compound verb. Now, in this case, the auxiliary verb, you know, they work in such a way that they, after you add them to the main verb, their meaning is lost. Okay, uh, but they give a new dimension or a new flavor. They add a new flavor to the main verb. Okay, and that's why they are called compound verb. And in Hindi, you know, there are, there are many auxiliary verbs basically that can be used, but there are three most popular ones. And today we'll be focusing on one of them, okay? Uh, they are called jhana. That's, as you probably have heard of it in the past, but you know, lena and dena. Okay, you probably have used them just as a main verb. Okay, so just to kind of recap for everyone else, um, I'm gonna pick one of you, like what is jhana? Ted, you want to unmute yourself and tell us what is, if you were to use jhana as a main word, what does it mean? Uh, to go. To go, okay. And khana is already a main word, and khana is to? To eat. To eat. And lena? To take. Okay, to take and lena is to? To give. To give, very good, right? So you see, when you talk about these words independently, they have some meaning, okay? But what if I want to use them, these three, as an auxiliary verb, which means I want to use them along with some of the main verbs, okay? Um, so what if I want to use khana and after that, you know, uh, the, the inflected form of jhana, okay? Uh, you know, you can say they'll be called, as you probably know, you will remove the na and you'll put the next word, kha jhana, okay? Um, you know, you want to use pina along with jhana. You will say, you remove the na and you put pijana. Okay. You see, uh, in that case, that the main uh, meaning of the jhana, like that Ted just mentioned, to go is lost. But you can tell that it is adding some flavor to this main verb. Okay. And that's compound verb. Okay. So with that, uh, so this is uh, just a definition, okay? Uh, now we'll look into what problem are they trying to solve? Like, because that's the main thing as a Hindi speaker, what I'm realizing that as I, you know, cover more and more, the question is like, the topic is good, the grammar is good, but why do I even use it? Or when do I know that I have to use a compound verb here, right? Uh, you know, at the end of the day, what problem are they solving for me? Okay, so let's look into that. Hopefully you were able to write it down, the, just the definitions. Um, now let's look into, so for that, I'm gonna take some examples and I'm gonna, you know, use them to, to make my point. So let's say I want to say, uh, he sleeps. And as I'm writing it, try to think about what's, how these sentences are changing. He slept. He has slept. Okay, similarly, let's look at another, you know, change, which is like the, 
the tree fell and the next one is the tree has has fallen okay i'm going to take one more example um the bus stopped and the next one is the bus has stopped okay now my question to everyone is and i want you to use the zoom chat to tell me your observation what is your observation do you see any difference between this sentence and this one he slept versus he has slept the tree fell versus the tree has fallen the bus stopped versus the bus has stopped um not this difference i mean we, we can tell that visually that you know there is a has here but in terms of state in terms of state of you know the the person the tree and the bus what is is there a state changing okay so i want you all to to tell me what is the fundamental difference that you see um between these two sentences okay and i'm already started to see some you know um some observations here leon is saying there is a sense of completion okay so that's a good one so i'm going to write it down there is a sense of completion okay okay what else do you guys see the verb has completed okay very good okay <laughs> done and dusted that's a good one i like it <laughs> okay so the verb is completed so i'm going to call it v1 the verb that we are talking about like there are two verbs like the verb the first one we talk about like you know sleep here right uh, similarly the uh, to fall right the verb we are talking about the first one v1 has completed okay that's a good one okay then understood another one okay job is done it's definitely finished okay and that's a good one too okay so job is done how do i write it i'm going to probably use this part and i'm going to just say job is done okay maybe you will remember that way right job is done okay action has been completed okay awesome so you are all hitting the right chord here so you see what they fight now i want to say so all of those are correct there is a sense of completion the v1 the verb one that we are talking about it's completed okay you can you have a you know that sense that the state of v1 has changed from before okay now how do i say that in hindi okay can i uh, let me pick on this time um, who do i pick on everyone is trying to hide okay john <laughs> i'm going to pick on you okay he sleep tell me about he uh, start with this he sleeps how do you say that in hindi so i would say wo sota hai okay vah sota hai vah yeah. is yeah and sleep to sleep is sona that's a word right and uh, because it's present indefinite you will say vah sota hai for a guy you remove the na and you put ta okay he slept wo soya vah soya very good or wo soya colloquially we say now should i say the same thing like you know does it give you the sense of completion if you have to say that you know he has slept no wo so gaya okay so you see you you have added sona along with another verb right we we'll learn into it we'll we will we'll try to break it down okay but thanks so much for helping me here um tara ji you want to pick it up the tree fell how will you say that in hindi unmute yourself Pair, gira. Pair, gira. Right? What is the verb here? To fall is. Girna. Girna. To fall is girna. And in this case, you are saying because it's past, you will say pair, gira. Okay. What about the second one? Do you see any difference? Will you say the same thing? If you have to show that you know, the tree has actually finally it has like fallen. Yeah. Yeah. Then. Uh, pair gir gaya. Pair gir gaya. Okay. 
So you are adding uh, the, the inflected form of jana because it's used in the past tense, right? So jana, jana becomes gaya for you. Okay, next one, let's see. Uh, Anna, you want to unmute yourself? I know it's hard, it's a new topic, so don't worry, okay? This is just like- Pass, um, pass, um, uh, is Rukna? Yeah, very good. The word is, the top is Rukna, very good. So okay, what is- Okay, but I say this, uh, Rukhi or, I don't know. What is it? I don't know the pass from. You are right, the bus Rukhi. Bus okay. rookie. Yeah, okay. bus rookie. The bus has stopped. Okay, the bus uh, rookie guy or no. You're right. Yeah. Bus rookie, right? Bus rookie. If I were to say to you, so say that back to you, you know, the key thing you should take away from it is like the action has been completed. Okay. Um, these are all good. Thanks so much for helping me. Uh, but Shishi, understand. could I ask a question yeah. here? Yeah. Uh, he has slept. Uh, I thought that it could be vo soya he. Uh -huh. But it, does it mean the same or is it different? Vo soya he. It's basically, right now we are trying to, you know, it, it essentially you can say it in different ways. You can say vo so chuka he as well. And it works quite well, right? Vo so chuka he. But here we are trying to use when the main verbs are used with the auxiliary verb, you know, jana, you know, and what impact it has on the on the sentence. Okay, so you can say that what you're saying, like where so they are, and it convey the same meaning. Okay, where so yeah, right? But uh, you know, if you want to say it slightly differently, where so yeah, or somebody else is saying it. To you, you know, where so gaya hai, what should you take away from that? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Awesome. That's a good question. Um, it again comes down to like, when do I use it? Like, you know, it's so think about it like it's not just you, the other person you're speaking with or what you're reading, you may come across this as well. Um, so let's ask you, if, yeah. if we kept with that same example. If somebody said to me, Vo soya hai, mm -hmm. I would understand that as like he has slept, like he's still in the state. If somebody said, Vo so gaya, it'd be like he had slept. Like it's for me, there'd be a, diff a slightly different meaning. So, what will you take away in the second? That's a you are hitting the right chord there. What will you, what is the difference? Let's, let's spend some more time on it. So, vah, soya hai. Versus vah so gaya hai. So we are saying in the second one, it is basically, you know, he has completed that action. So do you take away that his sleep is done or you explain it in your language, John? Depends if they use the hey or not. But the first one there, vo soya hai, uh -huh. I, I would definitely understand that. It's like he has, but he's, it's still in the act because he's he has. So basically, he's still, he's still in the process, basically. Still, still, verb one is still going on. Well, so yeah. Is that what you're trying to do? May I interrupt? Yeah, one minute. Okay, so let's just finish this one and then next one. So, John, that's what your understanding is? Still? Yeah, so if I use vo, so yeah, it'd be like he slept. I have no idea if he's awake from that sleep or if he's still okay. sleeping. If okay. I said vo soya ta, he had slept, now I understand he's woken up, or vo soya he, mm -hmm. to me would be, he's still in the act of doing the sleep. So I would understand that as, okay. it's and slightly that, different than vo so gaya, which to me would mean he had slept, he's completed the sleep. He completed the sleep, okay. So that ties well with the, you know, with the definition, but colloquially Hindi speakers, use them interchangeably. Yeah, you have to get the context of the sentence, but just on its own, that's how I'd understand it. Colloquially, you will see people like, oh, so yeah, hai, which they may mean like, you know, he has kind of completed it, but you know. Uh, okay, awesome. There was one more question. So let's uh, take that question first. Uh, I was thinking whether is so, yeah, so Gaya is more like he slept off. 
Okay. So it's finished. It's finished. Right. That's yeah. right. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. so it's a comment. Yeah. I thought you were asking the question, but yeah, you you are right. Like you know, the, the action has been completed. Right. It's it's being done. Right. Similarly, like you know, the tree fell versus tree has fallen. Like you know, it's basically um, the action has been done. Right. Um, any more observations or comments? Anyone? Okay. Um, so, yeah. oh, sorry. Yeah, so um, maybe I got it wrong, but um, I always use so, so there as I have fallen asleep. Can you also say that? So instead of I'm, I have slept, like I have fallen asleep and I'm sleeping right now. Yeah, so I think we are all looking at the different, the, the, the way to say it in English, but as long as they all give the sense of completion of the, the action that you're trying to perform, they're all the, the, the right, uh, basically notion there, right? The action has been done, okay? So you're all saying almost the, the, the same thing here. Okay. Uh, should we, um, uh, could you just give an example of like, if someone asked a question and you would respond with number one or number two? Yeah, okay. Let me, let me tell you with, with the help of an example, okay? Um, so let's say uh, you are in a situation, right? I mean, you want to just say, like, you know, uh, police came versus police arrived. Like there is an accident and you want to really figure out, uh, you know, whether somebody just, you know, in this state versus this state. Okay, when will you use, let me ask you slightly different. When will you use like, you know, police has arrived versus police came? It's really the same difference, okay? Um, arrive gives the sense of completion that now that police has finally arrived, okay? So if I want to just say police came, you know, I will just say police I. You know, if I'm telling a story that, you know, um, you know, kal mein restaurant gaya, uh, maine accident dekha, or, you know, uh, police I, you know, Versus if I want to give the sense that, you know, that it has arrived finally, right? It's like to come versus to arrive, the same difference. To come versus to arrive. And there I will say police are, and along with that, uh, I will say police are great. Okay, I know it's still probably not you know, super clear, but hang in there. Uh, my take is like by the end of like, you know, going through multiple examples, at least in the mind, it'll get clear, like the subtle difference. And sometimes it's hard to tell the difference. Okay, but- um, Ashuji, so, go for it. Okay, so, I mean, I had an understanding. I don't know if it's right. So uh -huh. basically uh, there's also one more situation. I mean, I'm just relating it to Tamar and trying to tell. Mm -hmm. So when uh, we don't really want to give an importance of something that happened, say, for example, somebody is asking, did she come like that? Mm -hmm. So when you want to answer like in a way that you're not very much interested about it, we say the first of, yeah, uh, like she came. Yes, she came. But if you want to insist and, you know, give some more importance there and say, yeah, she had come. Yes, like that. So is that right? Uh, because that we do in summer a, a bit times when we want to give importance of somebody like oh did she come to the party or did she arrive yeah yeah she came if you want to say that stress you say uh, oh, agai. but if you just want to say yeah she had come that time we use oh, so is yeah. that also right is that so same think, in Hindi as well yeah the keyword emphasis like you know you are giving not importance but like you are trying to emphasize something you know that is that I will take that part like you know you are trying to emphasize yeah. it you are trying to say that this action has completed, like calm ho gaya. Like calm hua is yeah. like work is work was done, right? It now. just happened, yeah. It always got over, but it's um, it's done. Like so, a little bit of emphasis. Okay. It's a part and parcel of you know you want to to show that it is being done. At the end of the day, it's something is completed, and you know you are trying to say because. Importance is one aspect of it. Something sometimes you want, if you want to highlight even the negative part, like you know, you will say that as well, right? So it's 
uh, essentially that's what you are trying to to say yeah so is it kind of like the implied like finally finally police, finally arrived right versus finally. police came but versus they finally got here yeah. yeah yeah if that helps you you can say that finally this is done okay Ashuji, I also have a question before you erase. Why did we use he in the first uh, one? Could we say it without he? Which one? Police I versus police I? No, army? like uh, when we say, what was the first one? Uh, with, he sleeps. Uh, he sleeps. Yeah. So, Gaia, he. Why mm -hmm. do we have to use he? So, uh, let me write it down. Over here. So, Gaia. You're saying why do we do? You can remove it. It's basically implied. Yeah, so we can just say so Gaya. It's not. So the reason is I say that is if you don't say it like you know it's it's implied that it is present perfect. If you say so Gaya tha, that's past perfect, right? Mm -hmm. So you know, gener generally speaking, Hindi speakers if they don't put anything, it's they're implying the present perfect, uh, and if they say. Deliberately, if you put tha, that means you know that you know that. But isn't already in the past? It is. We use, uh, yeah. So um. Yeah, it is. But think about it this way, right? I mean, that why do we have the whole notion of um, something in like you know present indefinite versus present perfect, versus the same thing past indefinite versus past perfect, right? I mean, that the whole notion of like you know you have you know different tenses, like you know. Uh, so I see what you're saying, you know, I, 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 you know, I, let's see if some of the other friends have the better explanation about like, um, about why are we putting hair versus ta? Because I just thought it's so clear when you say so Gaya, it, it makes sense. It's in the past. That's it. Yeah. And yeah. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Right. So let's, let's continue to look at some more examples. And then you know, uh, hopefully, the you know picture clear for Jaiji. Like, let me use a compound word, okay? Slowly, <laughs> okay. So uh, let's look at some more. So I'm going to use this time um, a list of basically um, some of the more common words. So let's say these are the main words, and Rupert Snell also uses them in the in the in the book. So these are, I'm just taking some of it from him. And then along with that, if you want to use the auxiliary word. So let's say you have Ana. So Ana is to, to come. Okay, okay. And then let's say you want to use it along with Jana. So you will say A Jana. It's basically to arrive. That's basically uh, giving emphasis or telling that this action has been done. Okay. Um, the other word he uses is khana, is to eat. Okay. And let's use it with uh, with the auxiliary verb jana. Dhanraj, what will it be? It will be uh, a khana. Huh? You want to use Kana along with Jana. If you use Ana, the Jana is Ka Jana. When you use Kana along with Jana, it would be Ka Jana. Okay, very good. Ka Jana. Ka Jana. Do you see a difference between them? Like you want to say, Me, Me, uh, Me. Mene dosa khaya versus mene dosa kha gaya. Do you see any difference? Trying to, um, so is it like something that had already happened? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. So ate up basically, right? Something that you, you know, to eat something up, to eat up. Okay. Uh, let's look at the next one. Pina versus the next one. Pina is to drink. Sangeeta ji, are you there? I'm not sure if she's there, but let's see. Okay, Batsala ji, you want to give it a try? Pina is to drink. What is the add jana with that? 
He jana. He jana. And what does it mean? He jana. To drink up. To drink up. Yeah, you you are pretty close, right? To drink up, right? Do you see any difference? What is your explanation? When will you use, like, you know, this part versus this part? And if you can think about an example. Um, I would I would say p p gaya when I gulped up an entire glass of water or something. Okay, okay. Again, I think it's emphasis, but it's also the finality. The finality of like you know, man, you know, Billy dood p gay, right? Yeah. Uh, right. I mean, uh, good. Um, this one I am adding it two percent rather than half. So bhul na. Let's see. Uh, Rita ji, good to have you. Um, you want to give it a try? Bhulna is to? Um, <laughs> what is happening to you right now? You are? I was having computer problems, so I had to get, get off my iPad and get on my laptop. So, um, Bhulna. Bhulna. To um, forget? <laughs> I forgot, forgot Bhulna. To forget. Yeah, exactly. I was, yeah, I was trying to give you a hint. <laughs> So to forget is bulna. Bulna. Yeah. Buljana. Very good. Buljana. Buljana. See, I'm confused about that one. To forget. <laughs> Buljana, right? My bul gay. Okay. Um, now it's a subtle difference. The meaning of think about it. It's a subtle difference. The meaning of jana is lost altogether, but it has given a new uh, dimension to to bulna, the base word. Okay, uh, you know, you can say, man, my chabi bhul gayi. Okay, uh, I've forgotten the keys, right? Um, next, next one, right? To be, to be is hona. To be, hona. When you use it along with jana, uh, uh, Kelly, Kelly ji? Uh, ho jana. Very good, ho jana. It's to become. Okay, so these are just like handful of the words, you know, my homework to you is, you know, um, think about some more verbs where you can apply, you know, jhana. Uh, the, the key thing is like, it may not apply to all the verbs, okay, but at least give it a try. So your homework is at least try to find and you can do it right now in class, you don't have to wait as I'm going through it, think about at least three verbs and try to add auxiliary verb jhana in them, okay? Um, it will give you some more confidence, okay? So do that uh, while I erase it and I go to the next topic, okay? So again, once again, um, compound verbs are when the main verbs are used along with an auxiliary verb, uh, where the, the meaning of the auxiliary verb, you know, it's, uh, it's reduced completely, but it gives you overall a new nuance to the main verb. Those are the uh, compound verbs. And in this case, jhana, it's more specific. There are three more commonly used auxiliary verbs like jhana, lena, and dena, okay? There are many more, but these are the most popular one. And jhana, it's among them, it's a little bit more clear. It gives you a sense of completion or like, you know, uh, that verb one has been done, okay? Uh, it may not apply all the cases, but at least it should tell you that something has been completed. Okay, so with that, I'm gonna give the most, some of the most commonly used phrases where, you know, uh, where it is being used uh, colloquially as well as like, you know, uh, in books uh, in Hindi. Okay, so um, we spoke about, so this is more examples. So we spoke about like, you know, uh, police, I, I is like, you know, Ana is the word when police came versus we spoke about police, A, Gai, police has arrived. Now you will use this expression, you know, A, you know, a jana or a gai many times, okay? Uh, things have changed, it's been a, many years for me to be here, but like, you know, colloquially, it's like, you know, it's pretty common that, you know, 
uh, electricity, right? It was like two decades ago, it was not very common. So, you know, uh, it used to come in some certain intervals, right? I mean, so in almost likely it, it probably used to go in certain intervals, right? To, to conserve it, right? So whenever it, you know, let's say the electricity is not there and it came finally, you would say Bijli Aagahi. Bijli is electricity and you would say Bijli Aagahi. State has changed. There was no electricity um, and finally it came, right? So Bijli Aagahi, okay? Um, Right, you can say that, and then you can also say, um, Master Ji, Master Ji yeah. uh, what is what is busily? Electricity. Ah, sorry, thank you. Sorry. Electricity. Sorry. Thank you for the question. Yeah, yeah, awesome. Busily, Aage, electricity came. Okay. Um, similarly, like you know, let's say if you know someone is sick. Okay, and um, weakness. What is the word for weakness? Who who knows the word for weakness? Um, yeah, yeah. Who's that? Who, who's who's trying it? Anna. <laughs> yeah, almost there. So yeah, Kamzor. Kamzor. Isn't it Kamzor? Kamzor. Kamzor. And then weakness would be. I don't know. Almost there. Kamzor is weak. Kamzori. The, very good, Kamzori. Okay. Kamzori, right? So let's say the person wants to go to doctor and then they want to say like, you know, weakness has come to me. That's how you say it in Hindi, right? I mean, if you translate it, you'll be Kamzori. Finish it up, Anna. Kamzori, uh, uh, to me, Kamzori, uh, do I use Muje or something? You can say that, or you can, it's implied also. Okay, the Kamzori Ag Agai, right? Kamzori Agai. Okay. okay. Right? Uh, now, Muje is missing. If you want to say it for yourself, Dr. Saab, you know, Muje bahut Kamzori Agai hai. Okay, now again, Muje is implied, hai is implied. Okay, if you don't want to use it, forget about it. It basically means that if you go to doctor and if you're talking about yourself, you know, it means like, you know, weakness has come to me. Okay. Right. Um, quick question, nobody has asked me, okay, why are we using Gai here? I was just about to ask you that question before, I think two times, like, Maybe. am I because thinking about Electricity the past and weakness are feminine now? Yeah. yeah, so electricity and weaknesses are feminine, okay, and that's why we are using, uh, you know, uh, Gai, okay, and we are not using, like, the other ones, but same thing, if, um, let me say one more time, right? I mean, so so this is good, right? So now next, let's, let me erase this one and do one more example of gai. So let's say, what about like, you know, um, trouble? What is the word for troubles? Parishan. Okay. Parishan. I'm looking for so another Parishan Agri. Okay. No, I'm looking for, okay, Parishani basically. Uh, but I'm looking for another one. It starts with uh, Mu. Mushkil. Mushkil, okay, another one. Uh, Mushibat. Mushibat. Yeah, Mushibat. Mushibat. Okay, yeah. So it's also feminine, and you will say, who would like to give it a try? Mushibat Agai. Mushibat Agai, okay, so you'll say Mushibat Agai. Mushibat Agai. Okay, so again, not everything is you can be reconciled that, okay, this has been done. Sometimes think of it as like a state has changed. Earlier, there was no trouble, now trouble has arrived. Okay, so both musibat okay. Um, not to not get not to get into trouble myself, but like, it's also like sometimes you associate trouble with, with a person, right? I mean, that if the person has arrived, like, you know, um, you know, a, a trouble has arrived, right? I mean, so musibat right? It also means like, you know, it is used like when, you know, if you, if cert certain relatives, right, if, and that happens, right, pretty much in all culture, right, I mean, they bring joy, but at the same time, you know, some of them can bring trouble as well, right, so you can, you can use that, like musibat okay. Um, anyway. Um, Ashwini, is police feminine? Yes, that is true, police are they. police oh is, yeah, police is okay. Okay. Now, let's look at 
some more masculine one. So let's say you have like, you know, Bijli Aage, like in my home state, like in Rajasthan, even now uh, the water supply is regulated. It doesn't come 24 seven, right? Like in here, right? So you have to have certain hours where it is coming dedicatedly, right? How will you say, how will you say that the water has like really started coming? And I don't know if it will make sense for everyone. Uh, you have to be in India and you have to not just travel India, you have to live in India or in many of the third world countries to, to understand like, you know, that it is, it is precious, right? I mean, um, how will you say that? Electricity in Gujarat. Uh, yeah, Am Amritesh, how will you say that? Like the water has come. Pani a gaya. So, Pani a gaya. Okay, Pani um, gaya. What about like, you know, the, you know, the, the person who supplies, and this time I'm gonna ask Kelly G, right, okay? a person who delivers milk to you, like, you know, and um, the milkman has come, like, to deliver the milk. How will you say that? Uh, Dudwala Agaya. Dudwala Agaya. Okay, Dudwala Agaya. Similarly, um, Sharon, you want to give it a try? Uh, if somebody who, you know, um, uh, who basically iron the cloth for you, like who does the cloth work for you? How would you say that they have come? I don't or, know if I know the huh? I'm not sure I know the word for uh, the person who does the ironing. Uh -huh. uh, okay. What that noun is, wala a gaya. Yeah, what is cloth? A capre. Yeah. So capre wala? Yes, very good. Capre wala a gaya. Somebody who washes or even iron the clothes for you. Kapade wala Okay. Um, if it is a feminine, you will say kapade wali Okay. Hopefully, at least it gives you some more confidence about like, you know, I have wala or Yeah, I think what's the I heard only briefly. Uh, I said kapade wala or uh, istri karne wala. You can say that. Like, okay, kapade wala is like the more of the washer part of it. And istri karne wala also you can say that. Somebody who irons the clothes, right? Okay. So I'll give some more here examples. Um, so let's say you want to say that, you know, your guests have come. Like, you know, guests. How will you say that? Uh, let me ask uh, Octavian. You want to give it a try? Yes, I yeah. Gaya. Who? Yes, Aage. Okay, you can say that. Yes, Aage. And I'm glad to see that you use they. You can also say Mehman Aage. Mehman Aage. Okay. Um, you can also say, uh, and I'm going to ask some of you what it means. Chakkar aage. And chakkar aage. This is probably maybe hard for many, but let's see. Business? Huh? Business, no? Very good. And who is that? Radhika here? Uh, Nandini. Nandini. Okay, very good. <laughs> you said it's. I should business. know. <laughs> Dizziness. You both sound exactly same to me. Maybe it's your years of friendship, right? I mean, it, uh, dizziness. What, what does it mean? Chakkar uh, aage. I'm feeling dizzy. I'm being. I'm feeling dizzy, or dizziness has come to me. Okay, um, that's where you will use that. Okay, dizziness. Awesome. Um, I'm gonna do last one, and we'll move on to the next part of it. Okay, of the compound word. Let's say you want to say, uh, kids have arrived from school. Kids have, and I want this thing, everyone to try. Kids have arrived. Write it down on Zoom chat. Okay, kids have arrived from school. Let's see. Should all try. Okay. Awesome. 
okay all of you are right here um, and you are saying all of them all of you is like bacche school se bacche school se aa gaye okay bacche school se aa gaye awesome so now the same thing you know um um i think i have wrote one more example like you know you let's say nowadays you order food right i mean it's so uh, it they deliver it to you right i mean you will say khana aa gaya khana aa gaya aur pizza aa gaya if you have ordered pizza you will say pizza aa gaya you see that right it's you're not using pizza aaya you're using along with the uh jana or the variation of jana okay now another thing to remember is like you know um is it why are we only using it for for past because it's easier to you know why are we not using it for other tenses right so you have we started with ana we 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 looked at this part of it आ जाना ओके एंड आफ्टर दैट वी प्राइमरली फोकस्ड ऑन आ गया आ गई और आ गए ओके कैन आई यूज द अदर वेरिएशन ऑफ इट कैन आई यूज इन प्रेजेंट एज वेल एज इन फ्यूचर हु वुड लाइक टू आंसर दैट शनेल यू वॉन्ट टू गिव टू ट्राई um like aa jayenge okay very good can i say aa jayega or other part of it like you know main aa jaunga versus you know mehman aa jayenge uh you know the future can i say that I, yes yes you can okay awesome so it can be used in future part of it okay can you give an example of it मैं बाहर आ जाऊंगी ओके मैं बाहर आ जाऊंगी ओके नाउ यू नो हाउ हाउ विल यू से द सेम थिंग इन इन इंग्लिश अम जस्ट आई डोंट नो द इंग्लिश इज कंफ्यूजिंग मी लाइक आई एम गोइंग आउटसाइड आई इंग्लिश इट कैन बी हार्ड like the the literal translation of it right? i will arrive okay sharon is saying i will arrive okay okay now let's see can i use channel again you continue can i use it in the in the present also like aaj aa jati hu ha very good aaj jata aur aa jati can i use that yes okay okay very good so you can use that you can use in present you can use in past and you can use in future the only thing only place where you can not use it is when it is a progressive you know present tense or progressive past tense or future okay you cannot you cannot say aa ja raha hai or aa ja rahi hai okay or aa ja rahe hain it doesn't work like that every everywhere else you can use it okay so all the examples you know uh, we have tried so far in this form pizza aa gaya or pizza or you know bijli aa gayi you can you can try translating them in future okay pani aa jayega or bijli aa jayegi okay you can say and you will hear people saying like you know shayad uh, doodh wala uh, you know 2 baje doodh wala 2 baje aa jayega like you know he will arrive at you know at 2 o'clock okay um दूध वाला दो बजे आ जाता है दैट मीन्स ही जनरली अराइव एट यू नो टू ओ क्लॉक ओके अगेन दर इज सटल डिफरेंस वेन यू से लाइक यू नो ही कम्स एट टू ओ क्लॉक वर्सेज ही अराइव एट टू ओ क्लॉक ओके वेन आई यूज लाइक यू नो एज एन एग्जाम्पल Like मैं पहुंचता हूँ वर्सेस मैं पहुंचती हूँ वर्सेस मैं आ गया हाँ like yeah like or is it is it more that when you arrive from a far place you use पहुंचना like 
from the coming from the airport or something, or are they interchangeable or person versus object? That's what I'm just. Yeah, that's a good one. So let's write it down. Man, let me write down with functional. So you will say man. Um, man. Give your example, so it'll be much easier for me to to explain. Um. So like, uh, kal me um airport say um pahunchi. Okay. Me ne. Oh no, it's not me ne because it's just pahunchi. So kal me airport say pahunchi. So tell me airport pahunchi. You mean I reach yeah, airport? Just like yesterday, I I arrived from the airport. From the airport. Okay. So that you say me airport say I. Okay. I also just came. So okay. Or how about like um? Let me think. Um. I arrived from. I arrived yesterday from India or something. Me Bharat se um pahunchi. So you know, you you arrived from India is like Bharat se I. Okay. Uh, if so you okay, a Bharat pahunchi is like I reached uh, India. Okay. Oh, the other way. The other way. So have okay. Yeah. So like I right 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 so I tomorrow I will arrive okay. मैं पहुँच जाऊँगी so you use पहुँचना as your base word again and you right. can put जाना on it so पहुँच गया mm -hmm. again maybe as a homework exercise use पहुँचना along with जाना in three different tenses पहुँच present past and future maybe it will Like if you get if you come to a, a this is just, maybe this is just too much a, a Portuguese thing but like people when they arrive they announce it and they say you know I've arrived and everyone's like you've arrived it's it's a but I mean you don't say I arrived I guess in English right maybe that's where I'm going astray yeah yeah sorry wrong no, language no worries no worry. so how are we doing so wow so we are. Um, This topic is it keeps going. So I plan to cover there are two more. As I said, like this topic is longer. Rupert Snell, he just finished it in one or two page, and we have to spend three lectures on it. So if today was hard, don't worry. Uh, you know we'll be covering it again uh, in the next two classes. And uh, uh, you know with the repetition, my goal is like it will be clear. Okay. Um, so I want to. I wanted to give you more examples of like not just Anna and you know uh, the opposite of it. So same thing we have you know done like you know we have said like you know visually uh, agi. Uh, if it is gone or similarly we said pani agaya. Okay. Um, what if you know you want to say the opposite of it? Okay and. How will you say that? And similarly, I have like you know, dood uh, wala agaya, and like you know, rather than like they have arrived, they have left, okay? Or the electricity has gone. How do you how do you say that? Okay. Uh, so I want to give this as a homework, and I want you to give it a try. Okay. Um. So opposite of three of them. Okay. Let's see. Navneet, you want to give it a try? You want to give it a try about how to, you know, um, like, basically, agi versus the electricity has gone. How will you say that? Okay. Okay. So people are saying basically. Charlie. Okay. Charlie. Yes. Yes. Very Charlie. good. Yeah. How will you say that? Bisley, Charlie, Gai. Bisley, Charlie, Gai. Okay. Next one. Similarly, Pani. Pani, Charlie, Gai. So Pani is. Tani Gaya. I'm sorry. Chala Gaya. Yeah, Chala Gaya. Okay. Same thing. If it is so, all the examples we try, you can use it like Dudwala, Dudwala, Chala. Gaya. Okay. Similarly, you can say that, like you know, police chali gayi, like police came, uh, uh, police aayi or chali gayi. 
okay there you can there you have your sentence like police came and they have you know left away like they have left uh, the place police chali gayi okay um i want to use the i wanted to give the example of how to use jana with hona okay but we'll do that in the next class okay that's a very important one and i'm sure you come across like you know many variations of like you know ho gaya and uh, you know ho jata hai you know so but i want to end with some of the um, popular hindi songs okay uh, maybe that that will also convey like some of the 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 notion behind this concept like the popular hindi songs that have compound verbs okay uh, first one i have is like koi mil gaya and you can argue like why don't they have like you know koi mila right uh you know uh, it's i think it's a copy yeah it is a copy of the english movie et extra terrorist film right and so koi mil gaya okay uh you probably have also heard of this song like in this is a movie name you probably also have heard the song it's a old one ek pardesi ek pardesi mera dil le gaya okay you see the verb here is uh you know dil lena is to take the heart and dil le gaya is like you know has taken away my heart okay ek pardesi it's a very old song you can look it up it's a pretty good like good to watch this song <laughs> black and white okay similarly um you know you not all of you have probably heard it's like so gaya we have, we we learned about it so gaya but there is a song called so gaya ye jahan jahan is a urdu word for world right this world has fallen asleep so gaya ye jahan okay uh and then similarly like you know what is khona who can tell me what is khona to lose to lose who answered that i, I think it's um it was me leon <laughs> okay and if you have to use it with um with jana how will you say that kho gaya very good kho gaya okay and bollywood is pretty uh, uh, notorious for that like they you will use it and you know you know you can use it for like you know for any kind of like um lovey dovey things like heart or like you know anything like dil kho gaya or you know you know what i mean right so you can you will see the usage of all of them in um, uh you know in the, in the bollywood song okay um all of them if you look at it there is a word like here you can see the word is milna right to meet someone okay koi mil gaya it's like somebody we have met someone finally okay it's the point being like you know they didn't have the extra terrestrial before the, the 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 person from a different planet and now they have met that person state has changed similarly ek pardesi mera dil le gaya you know you know the the girl is singing a song and she is saying that ek pardesi that means a foreigner has stolen my heart state has changed right you know and then similarly so gaya ye jahan right i mean so hopefully it 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 you know um it helps you a little bit um we have a very short time in breakout room and i still want to do it so we'll do a short 10 minute breakout room and we'll read the paragraph 12b um paragraph 12b uh on page number 152 on the rupert schnell book okay if you don't have the book uh you can get from the the tiny cc link that we have tiny.cc/hindiuniversity and if you go to page number 152 um you will get the paragraph 12b okay and if you are not comfortable reading the devnagari uh again in the tiny.cc uh, you can find the um the romanagari uh, trans, uh, translation of transliteration of that paragraph as well so we'll do a short uh um short breakout room and i'll take all your questions in the separate breakout rooms okay um with that like for folks who are watching live on facebook thank you so much for joining and uh, we'll continue this topic in the next two classes as well